Hi, in this video, I want to share with you five things that I personally keep in mind or try to keep in mind when I want to set up a mesh network because I believe knowing them and most importantly using them can help me to create a much better quality mesh network. Number one is probably the most obvious one and I talked about it a lot on this channel but still very important so in a mesh network that consists of routers or devices that are not the same as each other. I mean, there are different models, for example, in an ASUS AI mesh network, which I can use different ASUS routers. It is best to use the most powerful one, most advanced one as the main or primary device and the other one as the node or secondary device, because the main one is the one that is directly connected to the internet and is responsible to do most of the jobs. So if I use the other one here, then it is possible that I might be overloading this one while barely using the other one. Number two, wired backhaul is almost always better than wireless backhaul, right? Not only is wired backhaul more reliable than wireless backhaul, obviously because wireless is very sensitive to factors such as distance, noise, interference, and etc. But it also could be a lot faster, especially with the availability of multi-gig Ethernet ports or even SFP ports in today's network devices such as wireless routers. Besides, this way the whole wireless capacity can be dedicated to the clients. And finally, using a wired backhaul can even help me to increase the Wi-Fi range. Increase the Wi-Fi range? How? Take a look at this. If the backhaul is wireless, then the routers have to be within the wireless range of each other. Because if they're not, then they cannot connect to each other. So basically, this is the effective coverage area of this mesh network consisting of two routers. But if the backhaul is wired, then they don't have to be within the wireless range of each other. Because in that case, the wireless is only used for the clients and not for connecting the routers to each other. This way, as you can see, the coverage area could be larger. It is still recommended to have 15 to 20% coverage overlap for better and more successful roaming. Hmm. Okay, number three. If wired backhaul is not feasible and it has to be wireless, then the best solution is to use tri-band routers, because this way one band can be dedicated to the backhaul and the other two could use their full capacity for the clients. If we use dual band routers though, that's when it gets a little bit tricky, because whichever band I use for the backhaul, then I cannot use its full capacity for these clients. We actually lose something around 50% of throughput here, and that's something I should keep in mind. So if I have dual band routers, then which frequency band should I choose for the backhaul? Well, usually the mesh system automatically and based on the connection quality of the bands would select the best one for the backhaul. However, there are cases that I might benefit from manually selecting that myself. For example, if I have tons of IoT devices that are 2.4 GHz, a wireless security camera system which is also 2.4 GHz, and I already know the 2.4 GHz band is kind of crowded in my area, then I might want to manually select the 5 GHz band for the backhaul so I can dedicate the whole 2.4 GHz band to those devices. Number 4. I would try to minimize the number of hops between the clients and the primary router. So in the previous example, if I add another node to the mesh network, then I'm going to make the quality of the wireless network even worse for these clients. And that's why it's a good practice to try to minimize the number of hops between the clients and the main router. So in this example, this setup is much more preferred over this one. Number five. I never use any DFS channel for the backhaul. DFS channels are 5 GHz channels that are shared with radar. I actually had the weirdest Wi-Fi issue some years ago causing by DFS channels. I talked about it in that video. If you want to know more about DFS channels, definitely check out that video. After selecting the frequency band for the backhaul, either automatically by the mesh system or manually by myself, a channel should also be selected. Again, usually the mesh system would automatically select the least utilized channel, but I can manually select it myself too. 
Either way, if I'm using the 5 GHz band for the backhaul, it's a good idea to never use any DFS channels for the backhaul, especially if I'm close to an airport. The thing is, if the router detects radar signals and if it is using a DFS channel, in order to avoid interference with the radar, it would change the channel to something else. And in the meantime, the backhaul and as a result, this node would go down. Just imagine how annoying this would be if you live close to an airport where there is radar. So if the router is automatically selecting the channel, usually there is an option to exclude the DFS channels from its list. And if I'm selecting the channel myself, then I just need to simply select a non-DFS channel. Thank you for watching this kind of a short video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you soon.